Hey there, future college students. My name is Kevin Landry, and I am the co owner of the Extra Point ACT Prep Company. Now, my question for you today is this Are you getting the improvement that you need on the ACT? just by watching the ACT tips and strategy videos. Now, as ACT prep professionals for the last 10 years, we know that ACT tips and strategies are very important. You do need to have pacing strategies and test strategies and things of that nature. But if you wanna get the really big jumps, the three and four and five points improvement, you really have to know your ACT skills. Now before we get too far into what ACT math skills that you need for the test, do me a quick favor and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you'll be up to date on more videos like these. We're going to be doing a whole series of playlists on all of the most common ACT math questions that you can see on the test and you don't want to miss any of those particular videos that will be coming out in the near future. Okay, so the purpose of this video and video series is to actually provide you with the ACT math skills that you need to make those big jumps on the ACT math test. Now for these videos, I've picked out the most common ACT math skills that are tested, and then I've gone into those skills, and I've picked out the most common ACT questions that come from those ACT math skills. Now before you watch the rest of this video, what I really would like you to do is I'd like you to go into the description of this video and there's a document there that I use for the remainder of the video. It's got a handful of math questions on it. I'd like you to stop the video, give yourself about five minutes to work those math questions, and then come back and play the remainder of this video and see how you did. Not only will I give you the answers, I will also show you some very good strategies to work these ACT math questions. So not only are you going to get to learn all of the ACT math skills, I will show you some strategies that go along with it as well. Good luck and I'll see you at the end of the video. When you finish, I'll give you some more information on some good ACT math prep that you can also use along with these videos. All right, welcome back to our pre-algebra playlist. So what we're doing is we're kind of recapping through this playlist all of the popular ACT math questions that show up from the pre-algebra category. In this particular video, we're going to get into what we call elementary counting techniques. So you may have learned these in pre-algebra, but a lot of times in high school, the algebra teachers, algebra 2 teachers especially, like to review some of these because we know that they're going to show up on the ACT. Now, this is your classic Subway sandwich problem. And in the middle school, school days, you probably learned how to do this with like a little decision tree. And decision trees can be very manual. So if you got two possibilities, say you've got heads or tails, you flip a coin and then you get a heads one time and you get tails. So we flip a coin, we get heads or tails. And then if we flip a coin a second time after the heads, we could get heads and tails. If we got tails, we could get heads and tails. And so we start looking at all these different combinations of possible outcomes when flipping a coin multiple times. So that is a kind of a decision tree that you may have learned in middle school. The problem with the decision trees though is that they're extremely time consuming, they can get extremely large, then you gotta turn around and count all the possibilities, and that's not a very efficient method to count a large sum of numbers, which is what we're trying to do with these elementary counting techniques. So the generic problem that you tend to see on the ACT math is the old Subway sandwich problem. How many sandwiches can you make if you have X amount of toppings, X amount of pieces of bread, types of bread, meats, things of that nature. So. The other one is like our first sample problem here. How many wardrobes can a person wear? So we can see here it says Jeff owns six ties, 11 shirts, and five pairs of pants. How many different combinations of outfits does he have without repeating an outfit? Now, don't let this word combination confuse you. We will get to, if you take any of the lessons in our online course, or if you look at any of our other videos, we'll talk about combinations a little bit as a special counting technique. This is really just kind of saying, how many different ways can he wear the ties, the shirts, and the pants? And so the way that you do this is you multiply the given information. So if we talk about each one of them as their own event, we've got the shirts, the ties, we've got the pants. So we have six ties, 11 shirts, 
and five pairs of pants. And if we were to multiply those together, we would get 330, which is answer choice E. Now, common mistake. So this is a common mistake that students make. They'll try to add these together and in the result they'll get 22 and you can see that the ACT is using that 22 as bait. A lot of students will add them together and think oh 22 I got the correct answer but that is incorrect. Very rarely and keep in mind I've said this in a previous video very rarely does the ACT have you just simply add two numbers together to get an answer choice unless they're trying to test you on your fraction skills or something of that nature. So just be be careful but these are very simple problems and you're probably going to get one question like this on the ACT pretty much every single test date. So let's take a look at some other varieties besides this particular problem. Okay, you can see here it says how many three digit area codes can be created if the first digit cannot be zero? So again, I like to kind of have a visual here and set up categories or events. So these are my digits. I have three digits in my area code. But I know that whenever I'm doing an area code on a phone number, I don't go 0, 1, 2, 3, or 0, 5, 5, or something like that. The first one has to be some value other than 0. So if we think about the digits, that's 1 through 9. So whenever they say the word digit, we're talking about you know 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see we have 10 digits here if you include the zero, but the first one can't include the zero, so we only have nine digits to choose from. Now, it didn't say anything about not being able to repeat the numbers, so you could do two, a two, and then a five, and so what happens is you can use all ten digits for the remaining numbers in this area code, and of course, this is a fundamental counting principle problem. We are going to multiply these together, giving us a total of 900, which would be answer choice D. Now we've got another problem here, very similar but slightly different. It's got a little bit of a different twist to it. And the ACT has given us an actual visual. So instead of me having to create my own boxes or categories, the ACT has given us a visual here. It says the mayor of Westbrook is deciding how to assign six council members to the rows of seats below. It says how many different arrangements can she choose? So if we think about this, think of it almost like musical chairs to a certain degree. We have six people that she could put in chair number one. Well, once she chooses chair number one, we had six people for chair number one. She now only has five people remaining for chair number two. And then after that, she only has four people remaining for three. And we'll continue this process until the last person is remaining to fill chair number six. Now, again, this is a fundamental counting principle problem. We're not adding these. We're multiplying these all together. And when we do that, we get a total of 720. Now, if you're sharp and you're paying attention, some of y'all may recognize that whenever we multiply a set of numbers, then it goes from the given number all the way down to one, we call that six factorial. And so you have a button in your calculator that you could actually press six factorial and we still get the answer of 720, which would be answer choice D. Okay, now we start to step up our game a little bit here and gets a little bit more involved. It says the extra point is adding a new phone line. The phone company says that the first three digits of the phone number must be 555. But the remaining four digits, where each digit is a digit from 0 to 9, can be chosen by the extra point. How many phone numbers are possible? So let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and create our visual again. The first three numbers, and then you have a dash, and then you have four numbers after that. But here's the problem. These first three numbers must be 555. That is one very specific number. Now the remaining numbers, I can individually choose the digits myself and so each one of those is 10 possible digits and so what we can see one times anything is itself and we have 10 times 10 times 10 well we could put that in our calculator and get an actual number but what we want to do is we want to look at the answer choices here we don't really want the big number what they want is an actual number in exponent form so we can see that we have 10 four times so that would be 10 to the fourth power which would be answer choice E. All right, and our last problem here gets a little bit more complex. 
So if you recall earlier in the video, I mentioned the word combinations. And that reaches back to parts of elementary counting principles where we have permutations and combinations. And so you would see something of this nature. We would say something like N permutations are, and what that means is we want to know all the permutations where we have N number of objects and we select R of them. Well, what happens is order is important whenever we're doing permutations. Like, how many ways can 10 runners place first, second, and third in a race? Well, the order in which we come in is important. If we went back to the chair problem where we had the six chairs and we were putting people in chairs, the order in which we put people in was important because once we placed somebody in that first chair, they were eliminated from our pool of people. However, when we do combinations, order is not important. So if we look at this particular so if we look at this particular problem, it says a committee will be selected from a group of 12 women and 18 men. The committee will consist of five women and five men. Which of the following expressions gives the number of different committees that can be selected from these 30 people? So the first thing that you gotta be careful of is this 30 is really bait or useless information in this way. What we have here is we actually have two events going on. We have the selection of a certain number of women for the committee, and we have a selection of a certain number of men for the committee. And of course, those are two different events that could happen, and we're gonna multiply those two events together. So if I know I have a certain number of ways that I can select the women and a certain number of ways that I can select the men and I'm going to multiply those together we can see right off the bat from the answer choices that A and C should be wrong. Now here's the other thing that's going to help us out. Does order matter? So for instance five women are going to be selected out of 12. If you're one of the women you really are concerned about whether you get picked for the committee or not. If you get picked first or you get picked last is irrelevant to you. You just want to get picked. So in this case, we are dealing with a combination because the order in which you get picked is not really important to you. It's just the event of being picked. So this is going to be a combination problem. Same thing happens with the men. It's also going to be a combination problem. Now, if we're just using process of elimination again, uh, we can uh, we can eliminate B because that's a permutation problem. Now, if we just isolate the women by themselves, we're going to pick five women out of a total of 12. And for the men, we're going to pick five women out of a total of 18. And you can see that in this particular case that that is answer choice E. Now, you didn't have to know the combination formula. You didn't have to know the permutation formula. You didn't have to press this large number into your calculator. You just needed to know how to set it up. And to be quite frank, this is probably the most challenging elementary counting principle problem that I've seen on the ACT in a while. But it's still a very workable problem. And remember, you'll probably at most have one of these variety of problems on the test at any given time. So good luck with that. There's one more video in the playlist for data representation, so be sure you watch that one. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos, go ahead and go back into the playlist and check them all out. All right, good luck on your ACT. Okay, now that you finished those problems, I hope they didn't give you too much trouble and you learned a few strategies to go along with them. So these are some of the ACT math pre-algebra skills that you're going to need for the ACT math test. Now, these are generally the easier questions and you should get these 100% correct. Now, there's 10 other videos that go along with ACT pre-algebra. So if you check in the description below, I've provided a little link to each of those videos. Also, if you go to the YouTube, our YouTube channel, you'll see the playlist. We'll have a playlist of the pre-algebra videos as well. And coming up a little bit later, we will also do playlists for the ACT math sections for Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, Coordinate Geometry, Plane Geometry, and Trig. So basically keep an eye out for those. Um, always check back to our YouTube channel to see if they are up and that we will have playlists for those. Now, as far as ACT prep is concerned, we do have a very good ACT prep course that we provide online. It's very affordable and if you follow us on our social media, we do give discounts from time to time for our online prep class. So be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter uh, or Instagram 
And also keep up with our YouTube channel because from time to time in videos, I do give you coupon codes for discounts on our ACT online prep course. So for a very cheap price, you can get a very, very good prep course. Many of our students go up four, five, six points. We've had students go up as much as 12 points using this program. So we look forward to seeing you in the future. Hopefully you'll take our course. If not, just keep watching our videos. That'll get you a long way to improving your ACT score. Thank you for helping us out. Share these videos with a friend. Tell as many of your friends as you can about them. Uh, we appreciate your support on our YouTube channel. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell for future notifications. Thank you.